Good morning. It's a Monday. May 10th. So here we are, third. Not quite a third since there's 31 days in May, but third of the way through, close to a third of the way through May already. It's hard to believe. And it's a rainy day today. Man, I don't know. I'm thankful for this. I know some farmers are still struggling to get their, their crops in, and uh, I know that that's got them a little bit concerned, And uh, but I know that we'll take the rain because last year was uh, not good at all. And, and our grass at the church is looking great, and really do appreciate that. So... Betty, I'm glad you're on here. How are you feeling, you and Mel? You guys uh, on the road to recovery yet? I know sometimes it takes a long time to get over that junk, and and I've uh, been praying for you when God lays you on my heart, and uh, pray that you get to feeling better. And uh, Kathy, hope you get to feeling better too. We'll be praying for you. And Mike, glad you're on here, and Susan, and. Uh, just uh, Dennis and Deanna. <clears throat> you know what? I I um, I saw Deanna and I didn't get a chance to talk to her. Dennis, were you? I think maybe you were gone yesterday. Are you feeling all right? So I hope you're you're doing okay today uh, too. So <clears throat> a lot of junk going on. Oh, Mrs. Sheets, I'm glad you're on there too. I just saw that and. Uh, um, <clears throat> tell your hubby that I said hello and uh, appreciate you guys too all the way out there in uh, North Carolina so all right well I don't know if you guys uh, uh, saw the any of the news or not I, I don't watch TV news but I um, I uh, good I'm glad you're feeling better Dennis that's good so but I, I read the news on Breitbart, and I don't know if you guys saw it in Calgary uh, that uh, pastor got arrested in uh, Calgary because he was not social distancing, wearing masks, and shutting down the church. And uh, uh, Carol and Nelson, you're on here, and they did exactly, Nelson, what you said they'd do. The <clears throat> and I think maybe, I don't know if this is the Polish guy, or this is another guy completely. I, this might be the third pastor. So you had the one pastor that got arrested and then they let him out of jail after 30 some days and he went right back to, to church and worshiping and they put a fence around his church. You know, that, there was that guy. Then there was the Polish guy that called him a bunch of Nazis and uh, they, you know, had the SWAT team there at the church and everything. Well, now they got a third guy and I don't know if he's a Polish guy. He's got a Polish name, so it might be the same Polish guy, but I'm not sure. I, I don't. I don't think he was in Calgary. But anyway, I think this may be a third pastor, and and uh, um, uh, uh, they waited. He came out of. He had a Saturday service of some sort. I don't know. We like we have a prayer meeting on Saturday nights, and so maybe it was something like that. And they waited till he got down the highway, and then they surrounded him out on the highway when he's by himself, guns drawn. You know, sure he's going to be a, a terrorist like Antifa and BLM, and arrested him for having church coming to America soon. Is that? I mean, we have we have a president that comes out in his speech yesterday, and <clears throat> we're, we're talking about. Um, Law Enforcement Appreciation Week is what it's supposed to be, and that that jack wagon comes out and blames distrust of law enforcement is because of law enforcement. Yeah, and, and we we don't we we do not blame the characters that um, won't bow to any kind of authority whatsoever and want to do their own thing and run roughshod over everyone and. I mean, they, they, they let Antifa and BLM go in and burn the buildings down and say that they're a peaceful protest. And then when you do have a peaceful protest by good citizens, then they're, they're called domestic terrorists. And, and, uh, and he goes right along with that. And uh, it's, <clears throat> it's a sad day that uh, 
what we're watching and uh, not really the kind of Monday you want to wake up to, but here it is. And so uh, just walk in, the, walk in the power of the Spirit and uh, keep doing what we're supposed to do and, and uh, be, uh, be honorable in your walk and, and uh, do what it is you're supposed to do. And it, you know what? It probably... It'd probably be a good idea if I, I was reminded of this. I read this this morning in my devotions that um, we need to pray for our nation. Proverbs 14, 30, 34 says, Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And bring our country back to righteousness. And that starts with believers. That, that starts in our churches today, right? I, I mean, judgment always starts in the house of God. And so God wants us to, to make sure that, that we are right with the Lord and, and walking in righteousness. And Shane, I, I see you're on here. You, uh, you guys be praying for Mandy this week because they're taking her off of all the epilepsy medicine and all of that and <clears throat> going to start reworking things in, in, in her body there. We try to find something that's going to work. So we will be praying for you guys and uh, do anything we can to help you. So, and uh, um, so righteousness exalted the nation and it starts in our churches and we, we just gotta, we gotta get, a, get away from letting the world um, dictate to us what we do as believers and, and how we live. I, I mean, our, our entire lifestyle ought to be different than the world. And, <clears throat> our way of thinking ought to be different than the world. And um, it, it just, we're, we're in a, look, we're in a privileged position. Do you, do you guys understand that? If, if you have most certainly placed your faith in Christ as your Savior, I, I mean, we're not, no works. I mean, we're talking about, yes, I have, there is no doubt my faith is in the saving work of Jesus Christ, then you are in a privileged position. You, you have the power to be called the sons of God. And that, that word power has the idea of a privileged position, all right? And so you're, you are privileged to be a child of God. It's a, it's a wonderful privilege established by the work of Christ on the cross and his death, burial, and resurrection. And, and through God's grace every day that he gives us. And so let's cherish that position. Let, let's cherish who it is that God wants us to be, and and so sometimes I think we get we get busy out there serving and doing things that that we that we forget the, the the worship aspect of things as a child of God. And if if we are going to be effective in this crazy world today, and as evil as it is today, and the challenges that it is today, then then we need to make sure that we're establishing a time of worship with our Lord in every day. I mean, every day we need to be reading his word and every day we need to be um, open-hearted to, to receiving the word of God and the direction of the Holy Spirit and, and letting him uh, conform us into his image and, and being more like him than, and less like the, the world. I mean, in all things. And and so we do that. We cherish that position. We spend time with Jesus every day at his feet. And, and we do that through devotions. We do that through a time of prayer. And, and, we, and, and we listen to him and we obey him. And, and uh, um, it's not always about service. There, there's a worship aspect too. And, and I, I think, as I was writing these things, and I wrote this down in my journal, and I think that, well, I know that th this devotion time has helped me with that. It, it, it has, I, I, and I appreciate your guys' comments that, that you enjoy doing this. And, and it's a great little group that we have, and, and I enjoy that. And, but, but it's such a help to me. I, I mean, it's, a, it's about an hour and a half that I spend reading and, and meditating and giving thought to to God's word and, and, and uh, hearing from him and then sharing it with you guys. It, it's almost like a mini message every day. And, and it really is, it, it's just, it's become very important to me because there are times when I feel rushed. I mean, I do this at nine o'clock, you know, sometimes I've thought, well, maybe I ought to do it earlier. Well, then I'm going to be getting up 
er, a lot earlier, and sometimes that I don't get to bed real early sometimes, and, and it's going to be a real challenge at times, and, and so I thought, no, I'm going to leave it at 9 o'clock, and those that can be on here can be on here. Those that need to watch it later, it's okay. They can watch it later, right? But what it has done for me is when when I get up in the morning, I get I get ready first thing, and then I come out, and for close to an hour and a half every day, I sit there and just worship with the Lord. And, and it has been so good for me. And I, I, I know that some of you guys have secular jobs and, and you're not able probably to do that as much or, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta set some time aside and it may not be as long as mine, but you gotta set some time aside to worship God. And, and um, it really is, good and and it's and remember who Jesus is to us Charles Spurgeon wrote this he said Jesus is to me all grace and no wrath all truth and no falsehood and of truth and grace he is full infinitely full and I, I'm let, let's make sure we do that and and then I, I was um it, it kind of brings me to these thoughts and and I'm not I'm not saying that everything is parents fault Okay, so, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But I, I find this sad. This is kind of a sad testimony because um, in First Samuel chapter eight, look at this. And in, in verse one, we got Samuel, and by this time now, chapter eight, Samuel is old. It says, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. But, but listen to this. And his sons walked not in his ways, <clears throat> but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Now, so lucre is, is money that they gain uh, mainly through violence and, um, and, and through wicked ways and, and not earning it whatsoever and they're not working for it and, and, and they're taken away from others who need it and, and uh, um, yeah and, and so they, they turned aside and, and I you know I read this and I, I just have to ask the question and I, and I write it out and every time I read this I ask the same question what caused them to turn what is it that caused them to, to not take the way of their dad? I, I mean, I, I I don't know. Was he gone all the time? I, I know he did a circuit, and so, you know, he was out and about a lot of times. Or were they just, you know, I, I mean, ultimately, our kids get to the point where there's a free will. And uh, we, we need to make sure that when they're young, we need to we need to conform that will to obedience to their parents, and then if they're willing to obey their parents, then they'll be willing to obey God. If they're not willing to obey their parents, they're not going to be willing to obey God. So uh, we we do need to to consecrate our kids and prepare them for God's service. And, and I don't care what they do for a living; they still need to serve God with it. And <clears throat> but. I just have to ask, what, what is it that caused that? I don't, uh, we don't have an answer. I mean, I can speculate, but I just, I don't know. I find it sad. I really do. And, and I think that was a weakness of Samuel because Samuel is rebuked by even the people that, because it goes on, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and to Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So here, I believe, is a mistake of saying that. He should have never put them in that position. If he knew that they weren't righteous and doing the right thing, he had a soft spot for his kids. And who wouldn't? I mean, we all have soft spots for our kids, but if they're not doing right, they're not doing right. And so... Um, my kids, your kids, everybody's kids, you know, if they're not doing right, look, they need to be told they're not doing right. And, and, and here we, we have the, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know why they went the way that they did, but they did. And, and we see here that Samuel, um, well, uh, he's still godly. 
I mean, we'll watch this in a moment. And Samuel's still a godly man and and did a lot of things. But anyway, it said, but this thing displeased Samuel. And it did. And and you know what you find, though, is you find that that it's so much easier to go the way of the world and and uh, follow the the ways of of the least resistance. You know, there is least there is less resistance uh, if you're following the, the world, and it doesn't mean it's going to bring happiness and joy to to a life of a believer. They're going to be miserable. There there is may I say also there is no way, no possible way that a believer living in carnality is happy in their carnality. And um, Faye, I don't know if Samuel's sons were married or not. Mrs. Sheets, you might ask um, uh, Brother Sheets if, if he knows if, if they, they were married or not. I don't know if that was a requirement uh, during that time or not. But, so I, I don't know, Faye. I, I'm not sure if they were or not. But this thing displeased Samuel and so here they go. They, they, they want to be like all the other nations. You know what? It's time, Samuel. You're getting old. Your, your boys aren't following you. And, and, and uh, we know that God is God. And, but, but we want to be like the rest of the nations. And, and uh, Samuel took it personally. And, and uh, Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. But then, look, look what look look at this next verse. Now therefore, hearken unto their voice. Give them what they want. Okay. If that's what they want, and they don't want God, they don't want me to be first place, then we'll give them what they want. Howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. You know, God, God's so good. He, he always gives us opportunities to repent and, and to be restored, and, and that's exactly what he wants here. But I, I like that. I, I like that. Hey, this is what they want. Okay, Samuel, give it to them, but you continue to tell them they're wrong. And we got to do that. Look, we're, we are, the, it's the Holy Spirit that, that reproves the world of sin, right? Well, the Holy Spirit today is in the life of every believer. And so we are the ones that restrain evil, and, and we do so through the Holy Spirit of God. And if we're not going to stand up for what's right, then who is? I, I, and, and yeah, there, there are times when, when we stand up for right. And you know what we find out? We find out that we've been wrong. And we get it right in our own lives. And then we move on. And, 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 uh, but we just, we just can't shut up about the evil that's going on in this world. And, and we got to stand up against it. And, and we need to earnestly contend for the faith. I mean, there are those that are trying to destroy the, the word of God and, and uh, we need to continue to earnestly contend for that. And so let's make sure that we do and, and let's have the kind of testimony that Samuel had, even in all of this. And, and he had his weaknesses, just like the rest of us and uh, understandable, everybody has feet of clay, right? But, but God still used him greatly and, and, uh, he just kind of had a blind side there. But then in chapter nine, look at this in verse six. And he said unto him, this is his testimony. This, this is what I, I would call a worthy testimony. And, he, and so now Saul, the King Saul is, is uh, looking for his donkeys. And, and this is when Samuel is first introduced to Saul. And this is what, this is what was said about uh, Samuel. And he said unto him, behold, now there is in this city a man of God. And he is an honorable man. Doesn't say that he's perfect, okay? And, and, and it doesn't say that, that he, he, he always did everything right, all right? We've already seen, he's, he's done some things that aren't, that aren't right. And so, all right, what are you saying here, Therese? I don't necessarily think Samuel's sons were God's plan for Israel. I think God wanted the Israelites to turn to him and seek direction. Absolutely, I, I agree with that too. So 
and, and, and not replace him. I mean, how could, a, how, could a, how could you improve on a theocracy? Really? I mean, how could you improve on that? How, how could you improve on, on just following God? I mean, in, in, uh, that's, yeah, so I, I agree with that. So, but here's his, his testimony. They said he's a man of God and he's an honorable man. And all that he says surely come to pass. Now, how can we know, how can we be honorable? Well, let's always teach and preach the word of God. Let, let's tell people the truth about what God's word says and, and let's stand on it. And and yes, there are times when we have to get our hearts right because God shows us things in our lives that are wrong, right? And so we we are growing every day. Every one of us are are growing and and being what we need to be. And and uh, but we can make sure that everything He saith uh, cometh surely to pass. The way that you want to be uh, uh, honorable and, and the way that you want this to happen is to always give biblical advice and you give biblical advice. It'll come to pass. All right. Because God's word is sure. God's word is true. Now let us go thither per adventure. He can show us our way that we should go and we can look the, the, the world is so jacked up right now. I don't, I don't know if you saw this or not, but these, these, uh, this woke movement, now they've come out and said that Darwin was a racist. <laughs> what are they going to do? I mean, that's, that's like their God, you know? Darwin is the one that has taught all this secular humanism that's, that's rampant in our society, that's, that's being taught and worshipped in our public school system and, and is being developed and, and modernized today in our universities and our state colleges today. Uh, and and promoted by our politicians of the day, and now all of a sudden these these woke characters coming out and saying that their their great leader is, is a racist. And I, I don't know, I don't know. I guess they're going to evolve into something else. And, and but it, it, they're so confused, and and the world is just searching and anywhere they can except for God. And and we can we can be honorable. And we can be, first of all, we can be a man or a woman of God. We can be honorable. We can make sure that all the things that we say shall surely come to pass. And, and, and we can show, uh, and show us our way that we should go. We can show the world how they need to go. And they need to turn to Christ. And so uh, that's an honorable uh, testimony, isn't it? I, I should preach on that sometime. But, uh, and, and how powerful that is. But then... I, I got to hurry here. What, uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm almost out of time here. Uh, Psalm 106, I was reading in that today. And, and here, here's a, I, I said, an unworthy testimony, right? And it says in verse 35, Psalm 106, but they're talking about Israelite, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. There, there is no reason why we need to act like the world. There's no reason why that, that if, if the world says it's okay, don't, don't try to soothe your conscience and say your, your misbehavior or your sin is okay. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. It's always going to be wrong. I, I don't know if you saw it or not, but a guy, a pastor in England got turned in uh, for, for uh, terrorist speech because he preached against the LGBTQ. And so coming to America, right? And, and the world does not dictate to us anything. Do, do we understand that? I, I mean, we, we, walk, we, we walk by the orders of God and his word and, and let us walk in a way that is worthy of him. And, and don't, we're in the world, but mingling among the heathen, that's marrying and say people, that's, that's letting unsaved people dictate to us what we do in our churches, what we do in our families, you know, how we live our lives. And they have no power or control over us in how we do that. That's all God's. And, and here it says they learn their works and they serve their idols, which were a snare unto them. And we get caught up in that at times too. You know, sports is a big one. I know I can get myself in trouble, but so often sports becomes a, a, a major God to everybody, including 
uh, Christians today. And, and they're just sure that little Johnny is going to be the next, you know, uh, first round draft choice and is going to make gazillions of dollars. And then later they're going to wake up and they think, and, and, and maybe he does, you know, out of that half a percent of a hundred million people trying to be there and, and then little Johnny makes it to that point. And then you look up one day and you see that little Johnny is a reprobate. And little Johnny has all his money in the world and, and he's living like a reprobate. And then you're like, whoa, what in the world are we doing? And, and let's be careful with that. And they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood. And how, how, how often do you hear of churches having an argument over whether abortion is okay or not? That's shedding of innocent blood, and God doesn't like that. Even God hates that. Even the blood of their sons and their daughters, which they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, the land was polluted with blood, and thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a whoring with their own inventions. I, I, I mean, this is an unworthy, and, and oh, and then verse 40, look at this. Therefore was wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. That is an unworthy testimony. Uh, I mean, to the point where he abhorred his own inheritance. I, I, I don't, look, I don't want to live that way. Uh, and, and you know what? I, I sin just like everybody else does. And, and I better keep a close account of that. And I better confess it quickly and get it right with God and, and, and move forward and be what it is that, that God wants me to be or otherwise we're all in trouble, right? If we don't keep a close account of sin and confess it and get it right, then where are we going to be? And so um, it was just a good reminder to me. And then I, I got to hurry, but I got to share this over in John chapter six, uh, a worthy calling. And, and, and this is what we got to stay focused on. And, and uh, this is what it says in John chapter six, verse 27. Jesus said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. I, I, I don't know, I love that. I, I just, we, we need to... Whatever it is that we're doing, it needs to be for God's glory. Look, I, I, Sam, I see you're on here. You know, here, here's the thing. Platte Valley Baptist Church is God's church, right? And, and so everything that we do there ought to be dedicated to him and to, to God. And to, the ministries ought to honor and glorify God. The, the preaching ought to honor and glorify God. The, the lifestyles of those who are members there ought to be Lifestyles that honor and glorify God. The, the thoughts and the attitudes of our church ought to be those that honor and glorify God. I mean, it's all God's, right? And, and so when, when that church is focused on doing God's will and honoring and glorifying God, he's got it, right? Well, I was talking to a couple of guys yesterday. One's a business owner, one's a farmer. I said, you guys are the same way. You're, the, the business owner, I told him, I said, your business... You've shown me through the years that your business is there to honor and glorify God. Yeah, you make a living, but you use that to honor and glorify God. Well, God's got it. He'll take care of you. He'll, he'll bring the business when you need it. He will, he'll bring the people that, that need to work there, uh, your, your employees. He'll give you the right employees. He'll, he'll, he'll help you in all of that. You just keep consecrating that all to God. Same way with the farm. That, that farmer, same thing. You, you just consecrate that to God. You, you use it, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to make a living, and, but you use it to honor and glorify God. When he does that, look, he's got you. He, he'll take care of it. He'll bring rain when it's needed. He'll give you the, the moisture. He'll, he'll give you the nutrients. He, he'll bring the crops up. And, and when, he, when he does bring the hail or bring the drought or whatever else that happens along the way. It's still his. He's got it. And, and he's got everything under control. So what? that's a worthy calling. I mean, that's, that's just worthy. It's worthy to, to serve him and, and just walk with him. In these days of uncertainty and how crazy this world is, 
we have something that is certain, and that's our Savior. And and he's got us. We just need to walk with him and, and do better at it every day, right? That's a challenge for all of us is to do better and to to walk in a way that that is honorable and, and righteous in God's eyes. And when we do that, we got God's blessings, and that's all we want. We, who cares what the world has? We got God, and we got his blessings, and we have eternal life, and we have streets of gold, and, and we have the beautiful river, and, and we have the... We're going to have the fruit trees that bear different fruits every month. We have the the wonderful, blessed privilege in the presence of our Savior and our God. And, and <laughs> what you think this offers anything close to that? Not even close, right? Let's just serve Him. God bless you guys, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.